But right now in America, in this right. country, yeah. all the experts are saying we don't need potassium iodide. And I, and I want to close this just by saying I know there is massive hysteria out there. Wow, I'm Hoople's Cat. And this is the second video on potassium iodide or potassium iodate. Everything you need to know. First one was five major myths. This one is going to be questions on the use of it. One of the major questions people have is can they use it on their pets? People love their pets these days and treat them like children. Any mammal has a thyroid gland which in adult males is below our Adam's apple in about the same position for a female human being. So even little Wolfie has a thyroid gland and he will preferentially absorb iodine-131, the radioactive form, rather than normal iodine unless the thyroid is blocked with normal iodine. So the answer to the question is yes you can use it on your pets. Generally there is no information I can find on it that's reputable, but you can use it based on weight. So Wolfie weighs about 24 pounds of weight, so I'd give him a one to three month old dose. But I wouldn't give Wolfie any at all. Wolfie's very old. Wolfie's going to die long before he gets thyroid cancer. Now if Wolfie was a young little pup or a little kitten, well if he was a kitten he'd have some issues. But you never know, if he identifies as a kitten, he could be a kitten. Meow! Maybe, if I have plenty and I don't have neighbours to give it to, I might actually give some to my dog and cat. Now, I can't find out about horses, I can't find out about cows, but anything with a thyroid gland will benefit from having a potassium iodide or potassium iodate blocker. The main thing you can do for your pets, and for yourself, is to actually stay indoors, don't go outside, and eat and drink everything from before the bonds fell. That's the best thing you can do for yourself and for your pets. That's not realistic advice for a lot of people, but it's the best I have. So Hoople's, when should I start taking my potassium iodide or my potassium iodate tablets? Good question. CDC says when a doctor on the radio or TV tells you to. I say depends on the situation. If it's an all out nuclear strike on the United States of America, I wouldn't be waiting for a doctor to tell me to take this tablet. If you hear the nuclear power plant's core containment has failed and it is upwind from you, if you hear that a nuclear bomb has dropped and it is upwind from you, you immediately want to start taking potassium iodide or potassium iodate if you're going to spend time traveling outside without a proper filtration mask on and or if you are going to eat and drink stuff from outside that is out there and has had fallout drop on it. If you're going to stay in your house like I plan to and eat and drink stuff from before the bombs went off, you have no need to take potassium iodide or potassium iodate. Its only role in life is to block your thyroid and to stop iodine-131 getting in. So take your loading dose of 130 milligrams in my case, zero to 24 hours before you have to go outside or eat and drink contaminated material. 20 to 24 hours is the ideal period. You can take it two hours after exposure. I don't recommend that. More than two hours after exposure, you're probably not getting any help from that. In the past, I said 36 hours. The reason for that was I would take it 36 hours before I contaminate myself. 24 hours after that, i.e. 12 hours before I contaminate myself, I would have took another tablet. In other words, I've given myself two loading doses before I get exposed. Having read up on it, zero need for that. Just the one tablet, that's all I need. I don't need to double dose. In fact, I'm wasting a dose by that protocol. 20 to 24 hours before exposure is when you want to take it. Now you might not be at home when the bombs drop or the nuclear plant ruptures, so you should actually have potassium iodate or potassium iodide in your car, especially in times of international tension. I do. So in point of fact, in certain circumstances, I won't really know the bombs have dropped and I will take it as soon as I'm aware of the fact. This may or may not be two hours after the bombs dropped, I don't know. But I'm going to take it as soon as I'm aware of the fact that iodine-131 will be in the atmosphere. How much should I take? Now most people are going to have 20 tablets or 14 tablets. Okay, I get it. I'm going to take it when I need to, which is when I'm going to be exposed, not when I might be exposed. Okay, so now we know when you should be taking it. How much are you going to take? People might have a 20 tablet packet. They might have a 14 tablet packet. I believe 10 tablet packets are now available because of the price rise. So for me, I'm taking one tablet to start with. That's day one. You can take one tablet a day. So day one, I'm going to take it. Day one is not the day the bombs drop. Day one is the day before I'm going to be exposed to environmental I-131. Now you could just take the 14 over the next 14 days, or the 20 over the next 20 days, or the 10 over the next 10 days. There is no exact answer to this. I'm using my opinion.
bear that in mind. This is what I'm going to do, this is what I think. I have done some reading around it, but this is not 100% certain information and it will involve risk. It will involve intelligent risk. So iodine-131 is highly radioactive. It likes to get into the thyroid. It likes to get into the thyroid 500 to 1,000 times more than normal radioactive material likes to get into any other solid organ. It really, really gets soaked up by the thyroid, which is why it's so dangerous the younger you are. It only takes 0.1 sieverts to actually cause cancer of the thyroid. You don't have to worry about what that is. It's a tiny, tiny amount. That's why the tablets, 130 milligrams of potassium iodide, flood the thyroid with 700 times more iodine than the thyroid can absorb. They block every ability further iodine that's radioactive getting in there. KI dissolves in the stomach and releases stable iodine. The medication is carried by the bloodstream to your thyroid gland. The thyroid gland fills with stable iodine, which helps block radioactive iodine from being absorbed. After taking the medication, your thyroid won't absorb radioactive iodine for 24 hours. Public health officials will let you know if you need another dose. Both potassium iodate and potassium iodide will cause side effects, and some of those side effects can be lethal, rarely. Thyroid cancer from this type of exposure is almost always lethal. So normal treatment protocols will tell you just take a tablet a day for 7 to 10 to 14 days because that's what you do. This is based upon a core release. This is based upon iodine-131 is in your local area, the doctors are aware of it, health services are aware of it. Grab your iodide tablets, take them now, keep taking them until we tell you not to. And they'll tell you to stop taking them when there's no iodine-131 in the area or more likely they've actually evacuated you out of the area. If there's no I-131 in the area, there is no need at all to take this. Now, I like to think that most of my viewers are highly educated and intelligent, and you'll see the flaw of this plan. Taking one a day for 14 days in a nuclear war situation is probably not the smartest thing you've ever done. They're going to tell you on the radio to start taking a tablet a day. You know why? Because this is not a focus anymore. There's no way to go. If we've had a nuclear war, I-131 is everywhere. Once you get out of your bunker or you leave your protected home, you're going to get exposed. Once you start eating and drinking stuff that's from outside, you're going to get exposed. Sadly, one tablet only really works 100% effectively for 24 hours. So you're going to have to look at how many tablets you have and make decisions. If you have a thousand tablets and a small family, you can just keep taking it every day and there'll be no problem. Actually, there is. The 130 milligram tablet, if you keep taking it every day, is likely to start really accumulating potassium in your body quite quickly. It is not safe to use like a candy. You have to monitor yourself with this stuff. It might not be the smartest move just to take them one a day. However, I'm recommending you take some of this every single 24 hour period to maintain normal iodine around the thyroid to try and block I-31. And I'm recommending that you take that in divided doses. In other words, a 130 milligram tablet and then take half tablets and then go to quarter tablets and maybe even have to go down to eighth of a tablet. You need this to last for a specific period of time after a nuclear war. So what's Hoople's Cats protocol? We're very lucky that iodine-131 actually decays very, very quickly compared to a lot of radioactive material. Every 8.02 days, the amount of radioactive iodide-131 that's there in the environment halves. We're also extremely fortunate that it decays, it changes into a non-radioactive material. The bombs drop. When the bombs stop dropping, that's day one. And then we're over time, the amount of I-131 in the environment will dramatically reduce. So the longer you can avoid going outside and breathing in dust and being near dust, and eating and drinking stuff with iodide-131 on it, the safer you're going to be, and the less potassium iodide or iodate you need. Obviously, sheltering from the outside, eating and drinking stuff before the bombs fall is the best way. That's best for all of the radioactives, and it's the same for iodide-131. Now, potassium iodide is 700 times more than my thyroid can absorb. I-131 is 500 to 1,000 times more likely to try and get in my thyroid. So any reduction of dose is actually putting you at risk. The risk is real, but the effects of potassium are very real as well. So just taking a full tablet without any thought about what's gonna to happen to you may not be the smartest move. The other thing with this is, as you can see from the diagrams, the half-life of I-131 dictates that you are blocking your thyroid fully 
Maybe it's only partial if you have to wean a lot and ration a lot, but blocking it from I-131 for at least 32 days after environmental release. I would say 64 days is a good margin if you can get that far, but that depends on your local circumstances. But for sure, 32 days after release, that is the last day that I would feel comfortable not taking potassium iodide. Now, obviously, if I shelter in place for 14 of those 32 days, how many tablets do I need? What is 32 minus 14? The answer is 18. So if I have this, I can actually take a full tablet every day. I probably wouldn't, but I might. I might take half a tablet every other day and a full tablet after that. I don't know if other bombs are going to release. I don't know if nuclear power plants are going to have containment breaches next year. If you've got 14 or 10 and it has to go 18 days for your circumstances, you're going to have to ration. And I would ration by half if you can. If you need to go down to a quarter or even an eighth, do so. But do serious rationing as long as possible after the last date that nuclear bombs caused iodide-131 to be in the environment. November the 3rd, Russia fires nuclear weapons into major American ports because they're very, very upset. Over the next 5 to 14 days, America and Russia fire nuclear weapons into each other's countries and other people's countries because they really hate each other and they're trying to make a point. About 14 days afterwards, I realise that the bombs aren't probably dropping anymore, at least they don't appear to be dropping. For that whole 14 days, I've been hiding in place and drinking water and food that's not external. At the end of that 14 days, it's day zero for I-131. I assume 100% environmental problems from that on the 14th day. The last day the bombs dropped. Not the first day of the war, the last day of the war if you like. And then my 64 day count goes from there or my 32 day count goes from there. You can look at the graph and you can decide where your personal count needs to go and then you can make sure you have enough potassium iodide or potassium iodate or lupus iodine to cover you, your family, your loved ones and anybody else you might want to treat for that period of time. The whole period you want to stay well hydrated, the whole period you want to monitor your blood pressure, you want to monitor your heart rate, make sure it's not getting fast and thready. You still want to limit your exposure outside, you still want to limit how much food and drink that's contaminated you're drinking, because there's other radioactives, not just I-131. But it is what it is. Stay safe, thanks for watching. Toodles. Oh, this video has been brought to you by a very tiny Terrier Production 2022.